I still think e-commerce is by far one of the easiest and fastest and best ways of getting started online. It just really is. Uh, it's for I can tell you for our standpoint, it's one of the fastest growing segments inside of ClickFunnels, our e-commerce providers and players. And I think the Eric, the main thing I'm really starting to see a lot of right now is uh, people who have had experience in those other types of things and are really trying to take it from a hobby to a real business. And that's really where ClickFunnels, I guess, works the best is if you're going from just wanting to make a couple of extra bucks to really say, you know what, I know I can actually make good money on this thing long term. That's really where we see a lot of people coming over to the platform. Hello and welcome to The Robust Marketer. Today, I am super lucky to have a personal hero of mine on the, for, for a couple of reasons here. Uh, we have Dave Woodward from uh, ClickFunnels, which is, of course, just the, the, you know, the ultimate marketing uh, platform here for especially people who are doing info marketing. He's a podcast host. Uh, it's uh, Funnel Hacker Radio. is a top 10 business podcast, so th there's another reason that I'm super happy to have him here. Uh, welcome to the Robust Marketer today, Dave. How you doing? Ah, it's my pleasure. I'm so excited to be here, Eric. Thanks for having me. Nice. So I wanted to just sort of get started, we, as we always do. Uh, and, I, and I actually don't know this about you because I usually hear you interviewing other great entrepreneurs. <laughs> so, so start with your Marketer Heroes journey. Tell us how you got started in a, you know, in a, in a thumbnail sketch and, and how you got to where you are today. Oh my gosh. Uh, I actually started off Years ago in the direct response marketing business, I started off in insurance and employee benefits, all that kind of stuff. Started an online uh, internet, basically an online brokerage firm, 2000 or so, lost a ton of money during the crash. Uh, started my own direct response marketing consulting business, dealt with a lot of mortgage companies, started my own mortgage company, lost money in that crash. Uh, and then basically from there, got heavily involved in doing a lot of real estate, but was always doing a ton in the internet marketing space. I've known Russell for the last 10 years, almost 12 years now. And we've done a lot of different projects together in real estate, in network marketing, and in internet marketing. And so when ClickFunnels came about, uh, he basically said, hey, you want to you wanna jump on this wagon here and see what we can do? And so I was more than excited. And we've had just a fun, fun ride for the last three and a half years. It's it's the intro to his, because he started a, po a competitive podcast now to you. He's got a couple of podcasts <laughs> actually going. But the, his intro to his podcast, where he talks about this new opportunity that entrepreneurs have, the way he, the way he talks about uh, you know taking venture money as cheating. Uh, which, is, which is really cool. It, it, it is an amazing opportunity that everyone, you know, that, that is open to so many more people in the world today. And uh, ClickFunnels is a huge, huge part of it. What has it been like through growing through this like meteor, you know, meteoric rise at that company? You know, it, Eric's been a crazy, crazy ride. It's been a ton of fun. It was one of those things we started off uh, much slower than we'd hoped for. And it was a lot of trial and error at first to kind of get things going. So we started uh, September 23rd of 2014. Really didn't get things going until almost towards the end of that year. So our first year, we really had just barely over 1.3 million in revenue, uh, but we were able to jump that up quite a bit. So in the first year, base full year, we ended up uh, tripling our revenue, tripling our user base. We did that two consecutive years. Last year, we doubled our revenue, doubled our user base, ended around six about 50,000 customers and just over 60 million in annual revenue. And this year, we're on track to do about 150 million in annual revenue and 100,000 customers. So we're really crazy stuff. And your, your your one year goal there when you started, you'll do that on like a coffee break at, at, a, at a 10x event or something like that. What did you sell for? What did Russell sell from stage at that event? Uh, it's actually a lot of fun. We uh, he actually ended up closing over 3.2 million dollars in 90 minutes. Unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, we I was actually talking with a VC company a while back about it, uh, and they were asking the same question you just did. They're like, so you basically what you did in 90 minutes, so you did that, you'd more than doubled your first year. I'm like, yep, that's kind of how it works. That's amazing. I've been, you know, we've, we've, we sort of lot, we've sold some high ticket courses. We did, we launched like 14 courses last year. I, I was just counting. I did five different webinars and that feeling of like selling on a webinar of seeing the sales happen on a webinar. There's, there's a real rush there. And I can imagine on stage, like seeing that what, like, I guess it's the order form rush that you get when people rush to the back of the stage and, and actually buy it. It's gotta be unreal. That, that event was really unreal because we were in a Coliseum basically with 9,000 people three different levels and there was no back of the room so we had it was it literally was a choreo choreography type of event that uh pulled off ma amazingly well we're really excited are you about not it. entertained that's, that's right like, <laughs> speaking of the coliseum there 
Well, I want to just ask you quickly. So you, you talked about like the, the, the point at which things really started to take off for ClickFunnels. And what do you sort of like isolate as, as some of the key factors that took it from a business that was like working and growing steadily to one that made it just like the talk of the town? Um, honestly, for us, it was really when we helped people understand it was more of a new opportunity and that it wasn't just an improvement offer over like a lead pages or something like that. But that really... And that happened on, uh, actually it was Mike Philsame stage about October, November of 2014, uh, when Russell basically presented it there and we got the first table rush and we're like, okay, now we know we can take that live event. We can put that onto a webinar. And really for the first year, uh, Russell was doing almost a, a webinar about every other day. It was pretty insane. That's okay. So walk me through that. He's doing a webinar for, for the same product to different groups. Like he's just, as exactly. a, and this is opposed to this is being authentic rather than just running a, a, a webinar all the time. He was literally doing webinars every day. It, yeah, we really, he literally did about, it was, we were doing anywhere from two to three a week, um, sometimes multiple in a day. And honestly, the, we, we talk a lot about this and people don't really believe, uh, we, Russell, you'll hear him always talk as far as if you're going to do a webinar, you can do it literally until you've either made a million dollars or you've done over a hundred of them yourself live. And at that point is only the time we really started to, to automate it. And the main reason for that is we learned so much by the questions that people were asking. And, and most of them were questions as far as, well, that, that won't work in my business. And so we had things in the offer webinar, in the pitch to help them understand how it would work in everything from a blogging platform to a, a nonprofit agency, to a doctor, a dentist, chiropractor, whatever it might be. So that's the whole idea. And your clients are all over, all over the place. You have you have info product people, you have lead generators, you have agencies, you have affiliates. I'm sure you, now you have a lot of e-commerce people coming in, re realizing the power of this. That's actually a really interesting point that you mentioned about how you moved it out of a category, right? Rather than competing with Insta pages or one of these things that's just sort of, sort of a landing page optimization to really help people visualize the full funnel and, and the the power that 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 gives people. It's a it's a verb now, right? Or it's a this funnel hacking <laughs> it is. thing. Is it's like a, it's spawned a whole other category. I'm trying to get that in the dictionary right now. I'm trying to get funnel hacker as an actual word. So we'll see what I can pull off. I like it. I, I might get a tattoo. I was, you know, the, the, <laughs> the very first time I ran a webinar was when I had just taken over this position. We were running a course that someone else had created. And I just looked up, you know, I wasn't even really familiar with Russell at the time, but I looked up his perfect webinar script and we did uh, six figures on, on a, like a 90 minute webinar for my very first one ever. And we broke every rule on the table here. We, we were, we lit, we took breaks. My, the guy that I was doing it with was like, I'm parched. We'll, we'll be back in 10 minutes. And the guy who was like advising us on this stuff is just like, what the fuck are you doing? Get back here. This is absolutely ridiculous. At one point I'm like, uh, and you know, and you, you need to get, you know, th th there's absolute scarcity with this offer. It's going away. You will not be able to get it when this webinar closes. And he's like, actually, you know what? You, we'll, we'll open it up for another couple of weeks after. So you can just, <laughs> so we just broke every rule of webinars, but, but it still worked because the product was great. And our marketing up to that point had been really great, but it, it's just amazing when you, when you can nail it, it, it it's, uh, it's so cool and to have someone like Russell out there providing these templates, providing all this value. It's just such a, a such a treat for the whole industry. So thanks to, to you and Russell for that. It's uh, it's awesome. Our pleasure. Thanks for using it. So um, so this is going to be interesting because it's going to be a mix of questions. Like literally, I'm going to use this as like a you know 30 minute coaching session uh, for me <laughs> and my business. That's the that's the secret here. But also, I obviously want to talk um, for our audience. And our audience is made uh, made up of a lot of e commerce entrepreneurs, uh, some affiliate marketers, um, basically anyone trying to make make money online. Um, and I just wanted to sort of get your your sort of overall impression of the e-commerce space right now. There's a lot of stuff happening. Even just today, I was looking at some people talking about how, uh, you know, the, the reaction among pe pe traditional e-commerce people or sort of like this nouveau um, sort of category of, of e-commerce people who are maybe just drop shipping or flipping from AliExpress and how that's really becoming a, a tough option. Facebook is cracking down. Yeah. Um, ad costs are going up. Just give me your overall impression of the e-commerce space as you see it. I still think e-commerce is by far one of the easiest and fastest and best ways of getting started online. It just really is. Uh, it's for I can tell you for our standpoint, it's one of the fastest growing segments inside of ClickFunnels are e-commerce providers and players. And I think the Eric, the main thing I'm really starting to see a lot of right now is uh, people who have had experience in those other types of things and are really trying to take it from a hobby to a real business. And that's really where ClickFunnels I guess works the best is if you're going from just wanting to make a couple of extra bucks to really say, you know what, I know I can actually make good money on this thing long term. That's really where we see a lot of people coming over to the platform. 
Yeah, I, it's, it's, you know, we're working on this, this course right now, this will be a bit of a tease, but we're, uh, and one of the, one of the teachers who we're working with is really going to speak specifically about uh, creating single product funnels for, for products. So talk to me a little bit about the evolution of what an e-commerce person sort of thinks about. So they start, let's say Shopify, they start with their Shopify store, they, they, they find some products that are winners. At what point do you want to start looking at click funnels as an opportunity to increase your AOV and uh, basically drive drive better conversions using that product versus just a Shopify store. Honestly, I would say once you once you start getting traction and you feel like you've got a winner, and a winner, the hard part as far as classifying a winner, it's different for everybody. Uh, for some people, winner's got to be you know it's ten thousand a month, and for others, it's like you know what, I know I can sell two or three or four of these a day, and that's a winner for me. So, kind of goes back to as far as what your classification of a winner is. Uh, but at that point, I'd say you know what, one of the one of the most important things then is take that Shopify. We have a, I work with Shopify quite a bit right now. We've just got a new integration with Shopify. Uh, we've got a two-way communication between the two platforms. And really the main thing we're starting to see is the opportunity of then starting to add upsells. Upsells and downsells would be the very next thing I would tell people to get into. Uh, one-time offer, one-time downsell, whatever that might be, that's really where all of a sudden your average cart value or AOV starts increasing a ton because your cost to acquire the customer is already fixed, set, sunk cost. And now it's whatever else you can get on top of that. And so they're literally they're having selected to purchase an item basically and then instead like basically before the confirmation you know they're basically getting opportunities to buy other things and are those one click upsells at that point after they've already sort of said they're going to buy something do those become one click upsells yes they can yeah they totally yeah. can be and that's the no, which real is power how there. it needs to be it's we've seen it a ton i mean it you know you're kind of joking around as far as click funnels we talked about the webinar the reality is click funnels was was built on webinars and physical products being books and so our whole book funnel is how most people get introduced to ClickFunnels, which is, it's a physical book. I mean, it's a three plus shipping offer, 795, 1995. And so we're really familiar with that whole e-commerce play as far as physical products. And what we've seen typically is you can usually get by with about two, what we refer to as order form or two OTOs or upsells, if you want to call it that. We've snuck a third one in by introducing what we refer to as an order form bump. Okay. And the order form bump for us, so take for example, if you, on our 797 shipping and, uh, free plus shipping and handling offer, uh, when we kind of ran the numbers on that, the amount of people came in there and then the order form bump was a $37 order form bump. And it's a, basically it was a digital course. And we see a lot of times, uh, even on the physical products, one of the best order form bumps is a digital product that either talks about how better to consume that product, how better to use that product, or whatever the next step in that process would be. And so we basically saw almost the same dollar amount come in for the order form bump as we did for the free plus shipping. Hmm. If that makes Promising. sense. So yeah, it does. Uh, you guys are in a really unique position of obviously of combining the inf you have you have like the trifecta. You've got physical goods, you've got info products, and you've got software. That uh, seems like a really interesting thing. Have you seen people really integrating? Um, in so the easiest one for people before they start up their own SaaS product, which I'm sure a lot of uh, you know, a lot of people might be working on. Um, but the easiest way to be would be to integrate maybe some info products into your potential flow of an e-commerce business. What are some ways you've seen people do that well aside from ClickFunnels? Oh my gosh, I've got so uh, Trey Llewellyn probably has done one of the best ways. I don't know if you're familiar with Trey, but uh, yeah. Trey, his whole thing, he started off basically selling. Originally, it was the self-adhesive targets you could stick on on things and basically take target practice and his whole audience was going after people who were in really uh gun owners uh people in that niche survival all that kind of stuff and he basically ended up selling them into then a a monthly membership that would allow them to get whatever other resources they wanted physical resources at a discount almost like a costco type of membership okay and so that was a and he makes a killing just off his monthly membership and then he has the opportunity of going in afterwards and, and upselling him different products and services from that. So he's done a great job with that. Um, we've seen uh, people in the photography niche uh, who basically will end up selling a, a camera or selling something in that area. And then their upsell is on how to take better pictures, how to take how. And so it's more of a course on how to use what you just bought and to get what you really wanted out of your purchase. That makes so it sense. also it creates stickiness for the product. So they typically aren't going to return the first product. And they're consuming the product even more. So we see a lot of people using information products as a consumption funnel to then help them consume whatever they actually purchase physically. 
And it's just a brand stickiness funnel too, right? You buy oh, a product totally. from a company, you forget about them mainly, but then you take a lesson that teaches you how to do what you want to do with that product. You're going to go back again and again. It's quite intelligent. Absolutely. Nice. Trey is a Trey is a force of nature. He he came and spoke at uh, <laughs> the last, or I think at the Berlin event. I remember introducing him and going over like yes. the questions that we were going to have planned and his his just verve and like his, his, he's he's a real <laughs> like I say he's a force of nature. I, I I really respect him. He was speaking specifically about his flashlight stuff at the time, oh. uh, which is again another category that that he sort of created, uh, he did. which was really interesting. That actually um, became the largest affiliate product ever sold. We actually ended up talking, we were down at Affiliate Summit uh, two years ago and talked to them and basically, it was funny because we were there and literally there had to have been about eight other people selling the exact same tactical flashlight that he had originated. So it became yeah. his own One of my friends, James Petrella, started Lumify on the back of that as well, which is, <laughs> uh, yeah, which became a, a, you know, an eight figure company in his own right. Yeah. So it's, it's just, it, you know, and it, yeah. It, it, it speaks, there's a fine line always, and you speak about this as well, about the, the fast following and, you know, not reinventing the wheel, essentially, which is something that you guys preach a lot of. And it's obviously how many thousands of marketers are, are doing that exact thing with ClickFunnels, uh, where, you know, you guys are putting out these templates and people are just sort of like, you know, churning them out again and again. It's a, it's a really cool environment. Like, what do you think of this whole movement and space and how happy are you to be sort of a part of this whole thing? Oh, Eric, I cannot, honestly, it's... I have a perma grin on my face every day. It's it's one of those things we were really excited when we got ClickFunnels to stick and get going. There's nothing more exciting to me. Literally, I wish I could go in the other room and show you that we get in plaques all the time as far as our two comments. Over 300 of them decorating our walls right now. We've got 18 that have done over 10 million in a funnel. So for me, it's almost kind of the... Uh, the parental excitement of seeing your kid do something really cool. And I just love, nothing excites me more than all of a sudden we hear of someone who's having massive success utilizing our tool. And I think the part, I actually was just talking, uh, we had our inner circle here this last week and we had a couple of people in here where I was talking to an, Anissa Holmes and she's a, a dentist in, in um, Jamaica and she teaches dentists basically how to, how to use Facebook and nothing. She was expressing her excitement about the success of one of her students and their success. So it's, it's that trickle down effect. So yeah, it's, I love it. It's tons of fun. No, no I, what did Russell say in one of his podcasts? There's no more bad days. You know, it's just, it's all, it's all good days. And you guys, you seem to have such a camaraderie in what you do. You, like you seem to you, like as a company, it's, it's, well, this is what I really like. I know you guys grind. I'm sure you work your asses off, but you're not, you're not, exactly in that grant cardone like grind till you die don't you know like if you're enjoying life you, you're failing at work or something like that you guys seem to do a really good job of mixing up like you know team activities and you know you're working out together and stuff like that like what's it like working at ClickFunnels? oh my gosh i honestly it's 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 a ton i've got a 22 year old son who basically has just started working for someone else and he was working for me uh during the summer and he's like Dad, one of these days I want to come back. I don't want to come back yet, but I want to come back just because he missed the excitement. There's there's just a frenetic energy around our office. Um, it's kind of fun. We were joking around how many, I think I've, I've got ClickFunnels swag on, how many of our employees just naturally wear it. It's not something they're asked to do or anything else. They just, they they love being a part of it. Uh, it's not a, we typically bring lunch in for everybody. It's just, it's a very fun, exciting part of being in, it's kind of, I I imagine kind of how it would have been being in the early days of Apple. Honestly, it's kind of what I look at. It's just a ton of fun. I bet Steve Jobs is a bigger asshole than Grant. <laughs> yes, he is. Yes, he I, think, is. I, I don't know That's who it would be. Sure. There's yeah. no comparison between those two as far as personality type goes. But uh, the energy and the excitement is definitely a ton of fun. Yeah, I, I can't imagine. So we've talked a little bit about this, but just so we can turn this into a snippet and blast it out to the world, like what are your sort of top e tips for e-commerce people right now operating in this space? Like if you had to boil it down to like one or two really good tips, what would you, what would you say to people? Like, and, and specifically to people who maybe they've tried and failed, maybe they're sort of sitting on the sidelines, they know this opportunity is the biggest of the generation, basically, like you say, it's the easiest, best opportunity for people to get in and really like transform their lives. Uh, you know, by, by creating these amazing businesses, like what, what would you sort of give as, as your best advice to those people? I appreciate the opportunity. I can say we always, you'll hear us say a ton as far as you're only one funnel away. And we really mean that you're only one funnel away from whatever that might be for you, whether it's success in a dollar amount, whether it's your more time with your family and especially in e-commerce, I can tell you that the key to it is you just have to keep going. I can't tell you how many products trade continue to try to go through. We started off in t-shirts and it was one thing after another, and finally it hits, and all of a sudden you've got a $20 million month right before Christmas. And so um, 
to me, I, I think the main thing I would tell people is it may not be that first product, but realize that you're practicing, you're learning and, and don't, please don't ever give up. Realize if that product didn't work, do some more market research and try another product. If that one doesn't work, do some more research and try another product. And the two metrics I can tell you, I always talk about, and that is whatever you have to know what your cost acquire customer is, and you have to know what your average car value is. Those are the two metrics that we pay attention to all the time. And once you can get what we refer to as a break even funnel, where your cost acquire customer is the same as same or a little bit more than your average car value, you literally are sitting on a million bucks because now all of it's you've acquired a customer for free. And that's why that's why you need to eventually get off of an Amazon or shop. You have to be able to get to, to know who that customer is. And then it's all in the follow up. Uh, we typically see basically $17 for every dollar in the front end that we get on the back end. And so I'd say never give up. Amazing. And act, so Actionetics is your is the, the email component of, uh, of ClickFunnels. And did you guys recently roll out some big changes to that or some, some improvements to it? Like I know that I know you're constantly improving your, 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 your product, but talk a little bit about Actionetics and its role in creating that LTV in an ongoing way. Great. I appreciate that opportunity. Uh, Actionetics MD is what we just rolled out. So we have ClickFunnels and Actionetics, which is just the ability to send out emails, whether it's through us or somebody else. And then Actionetics MD, MD stands for multidimensional. And we look at the way in which people communicate these days is not just through email, obviously, uh, whether it's through Facebook Messenger, or it might be through desktop push notifications, through text. And so what we ended up doing was adding all of those to our Actionetics platform. And so now you can basically if communicate to people as they're going through your funnel, maybe it's on a card abandonment sequence and you can actually communicate through them through Facebook Messenger instead of just through email. Uh, desktop push notifications. If all of a sudden you've got a new product you want to have come out, it comes comes across their screen. Uh, texting platforms through Twilio and being able to to communicate that way. What we've seen right now is the the way which people communicate is becoming the most important part to a sales because it's all about relationships and you've got to find some way of deepening that relationship, just as you would with a friend or spouse or anything else. You got to find out how do they best communicate, what's their love language, and whatever platform they use is where you need to be. That's really interesting. And then, and then that really does speak to the people who, you know, who have maybe found some success with drop shipping, uh, but then haven't had that multidimensional touch point idea. They haven't built the relationship out. And, the, and now with uh, Facebook costs rising, it's harder and harder to make money on the front end. You need to build out that, that longer tail in order to build your business for the long run. Totally, right. totally agree. There's nothing more. The long tail is where all the money really is. Nice. Okay. Now a personal question for me here. Uh, your, so your podcast, give me some stats on your podcast. It, I think I just read that it is a top 10 business podcast on, on iTunes. It, it was right now where I think in the, somewhere in the thirties or forties right now, it kind of, as with everything else, it goes up and down, but yep, that's about cool. where we're at right now. What are some tips for growing your podcast? Cause I've been, I, I'm, this'll be episode 32 or something like that. And, uh, we're getting tens of thousands of, of views on Facebook and a little bit less on YouTube, but I'm just, what are some tips for actually growing uh, a podcast like this? Asking for a friend. Sure. No, I can tell you for a friend. Well, what I would tell your friend is uh, the most important thing that we're starting to really see is uh, whoever your guest is, having them share things helps a ton. It exposes them to a new oh. audience. So one of the things I've done a terrible job of, but we're going to start doing more of that. Um, the other thing we've seen is uh, we actually – we track through lips and I don't know what you're looking at as far as your downloads and things. And anytime we see that we get a, a real big winner, we'll put money behind that one and we'll promote mm -hmm. that specific episode. And we also ask for ratings and reviews, which helps. Uh, I think that again, if there's some crazy algorithm, it seems to most of it's really focused more on just downloads and listen time. And so we've looked at uh, adding extra episodes and keeping them a little bit shorter. It depends on your audience. Our audience is, they like about 20 to 30 minute episodes. Anytime I go much longer than that, I just see a drop off. Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah, we I, I ramble. So we go we go 40 to an hour sometimes. Uh, we'll keep this one nice and tight. Uh, hopefully you can share this podcast with your with your audience. Uh, that's so, so I'm tag me on Facebook. By all means, just put my name in there, tag me on Facebook and we'll see what happens there for sure. Nice. Yeah, we do a um, you know we do this video podcast, which is a little bit different because the holy grail for for me when I listen to podcasts is really when people will put you in their pocket. You know what I mean? Because once you're in their pocket, you're 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 not being switched off unless you're, people are using these uh, <laughs> iPod gestures, uh, AirPod gestures, and things. But anyway, like whereas whereas I do a video podcast and we strip out the audio, so we do audio as well. But the focus is on the video because uh, we have so many handsome guests. 
and uh, and we but but it's but it's a, it's an interesting strategy because people are less likely to watch a full you know thirty minute podcast as as opposed to just having it in their in their pocket and listening. I can tell you on the video, uh, one of the things because we're starting to put more on YouTube. I'm assuming is that where you're? I know you're doing Facebook, or are you also doing YouTube. Yeah, we do YouTube. We're we're sort of like we do both, but all of our promotion efforts now are focused. I'll tell I'll tell you actually, we're we're just about to launch a. Um, a WordPress, uh, you know, version of a place where we're going to host all of our Facebook podcasts, and we're going to start driving to that page uh, so that we get the both best, best of both worlds. We're hopefully Great able to, to to get people to opt in, and then we're also able to get because our most valuable audience right now is people who watch the podcast. The the, the people in you know, the lookalikes that we build from people who watch, uh, you know, seventy five percent of each episode, like those people are dialed in, um, and so it's a really valuable audience segment for sure. No, I so two things if I can real quick. One thing um, I would anyone who's listening to this, there's so much value in what Eric just said. I, again, Eric, what you said is like just dropping value bombs like crazy. The value of having someone listening to you that long, the relationship that gets built, we're seeing, again, you mentioned as far as Russell has his own competing podcast. He actually had his first, so I guess mine's the competing one. But what we see is our buyers and our stickiness is crazy for those people. For one, people who listen to podcasts usually have a little more money, they spend more money. And so it's a great way of communicating with them. Um, the other thing we've seen is we also on the YouTube side is we actually are creating a about a 15 to 30 second intro buffer about what's going to be on that on that podcast. So we have to do that usually post production. And that's helped a ton as far as getting the YouTube videos to stick. That's actually a really good tip. So you cut that you sort of just pitch directly to camera after the interview. You summarize it yourself and create a standalone video with just you. Nice. Yep. Okay. That, okay. That's just basically it's again, as you know, it's that's those first 30 seconds is what, so whatever value bombs you might get out of this thing is you'd say, Hey, you know what Dave said this, this, and this, you're going to love it. Go make sure you listen to this episode or watch this episode. Very cool. Um, I, I really keep, I, 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 at some point I really want to talk to Russell or, or about his, about his other podcast, about his Mormonism podcast. I'm, I'm, I think it's a really interesting thing that he's doing there. And I just watched a recent episode of uh, Silicon Valley that sort of speaks to it a little bit where it's like people kind of coming out of the closet as being, you know, having a spiritual dimension to their lives is, is an interesting <laughs> thing at, at, at this point. And I'm a big fan of a guy, Jordan Peterson, who, who, who sort of you leverages the lessons learned from Christianity into, into ways about how to live your life. And so I'm interested about that. I'm going to put it on the shelf just for one sec. I want to talk about the marketing trifecta. So I, I you know, that this is, you just recently did an episode on this where you talk about the hook, the story and the product, right? Those are the three. Um, hook, story and offer. Hook, story and offer. That's right. And I feel like, you know, that's something that we're hard at work crafting for this upcoming course for our events that we do and stuff. But I feel like it's something that, that e-commerce advertisers might overlook where they're really just focused on hammering the, the offer there. What, what, like, what are ways that you think people or that you've seen people do well when they integrate the, the, the marketing trifecta into an e-commerce experience? So uh, classic examples, we just, as meant, we just had our inner circle here. And so uh, one of the girls here has a, her own soap product. And so she's got all natural soaps. And so her whole, her whole hook is talks about what she did to find out why you don't want to have water in any of your, any of the chemicals you're putting on your body, why you don't want to do this. So she goes through as far as her journey and that's her hook to then get people in to listen to her story. Uh, you made reference here to Russell's book of Mormon challenge podcast. The hook there is the fact that here he saw, you know, he grew up as a member of the church of Jesus Christ, of Latter-day Saints. He has this book of Mormon all around the house. And then all of a sudden, he's like, I've got, there's got to be something I could do to get myself more motivated. And so his hook basically is the fact that he goes out and spends a small fortune to buy one of the original 5,000 copies of the Book of Mormon. And so that's his hook. And all of a sudden, you're listening to that, you're going, man, if he did that, what's the rest of the story going to be? And so I can tell you, uh, Jason Fladley has done an amazing job. Ezra Firestone, the same thing. Both of them have amazing hooks on e-commerce. I mean, they crazy, Ezra especially, just crazy, crazy hooks. Yeah, I, I, I've, I've seen it done well with like active wear stuff as well, where you're building in sort of influencers and the story of the journey that you go on when you put on active wear and things like that. I, I think, you know, one of the things that I see in this space again and again is that you really do need to start building brands. You need to start, um, yes. you know, I think I think that's a, an overlooked thing. I think it's it's coming on vogue right now for sure. But but having that brand and having that brand think about those three things um, right from the beginning, I think it's got to be super important. I totally agree. I, for us, the hook, honestly, if you have a strong enough hook, it can make up for a terrible offer or a weak story. It really can just because they're so captivated by, by that. 
for sure. Um, okay, cool. What's the best lead magnet you've ever seen? Oh my gosh, depends on the industry. Um, I can tell you one of them, one of my favorite lead magnets, honestly, is um, Ryan Dice and Perry Belcher's credit card knife. It's only because oh. my kids have, my kids, honestly, I think we have like a dozen of them around the house. I've I bought into survival life at least 20 or 30 different times because my kids love that lead magnet. And so again, it was this, that's the hook. You get through security basically with a knife and people are like, what? <laughs> oh, you gotta be kidding me. And yeah. so whether you believe it or not, that was the hook. And they've literally given away thousands, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of those things. Yeah, that's pretty unreal. And it's, it's not like you're going to hear it and be like, yeah, I really need to sneak knives past security, but it's just the novelty of it that makes it interesting. And the visuals, yep. obviously. Uh, very, very cool. What's your, so what's your favorite part of your job currently? Honestly, uh, this is going to sound totally trite. Honestly, one of the things is I love talking to people like yourself. I, it's just, I'm involved in business development. I run all of our business development, our top line revenue, all that kind of stuff. And for me, this is a people business. And I love meeting people who are utilizing our product, who are working with it, and who see not only just, it's not just the value for themselves in the product. For me, it's what you made mention of, Eric, and that is, it's the value in the people you're gonna be working with. And they're having success, and it's changing their lives. So for me, the part I enjoy most about my job is it changes absolutely every minute of every single day. I'm in and out of airports and traveling, which is always, has pros and cons to it. But for me, it's all about the people. I just, it, people like yourself, Eric, just, it's what lights me up. Well, fantastic. I'm, I'm happy to do that. Now, what about your least favorite aspect of, of what you have to do? Are there any aspects that you do that you, that you would rather delegate that you still have to do? Or have you done a pretty good job of pushing that stuff out? That is a fantastic question. That is my number one goal in the month of May. And that is, is productivity. I have, unfortunately, I, I hired a virtual assistant two months ago I've been paying her and she's done nothing for me yet. Only because I haven't, I got so much stuff I gotta get done and I just haven't given enough to her. So I, I told her, listen, you can put your two week notice in and you can quit because I will have you 100% busy by the end of May. So the thing I am the worst at is, I'm usually going a million miles an hour and I'm just not very good at delegating. So I'm making more of a practice right now of beginning the day saying, what can I do to get off my plate? So it's either do, delegate, get rid of whatever it might be. And I'm just trying to delegate as much as I possibly can. Very cool. So what's on the horizon for ClickFunnels at this point? What are you guys really focused on in 2018? Oh my gosh. Some really super crazy cool stuff. One of the things we're working on is what we refer to as our mother funnel. And we're in the process uh, right now. A lot of people come to ClickFunnels. It's kind of like we talked about earlier in the podcast. And that is they're not sure how it actually applies to them. So we're doing a lot of list segmentation. So our we just got a new video, our new the homepage will be up probably by the end of this month where you'll come in and basically say, what industry are you in? There's 10 different industries. You pick the industry and then from there, it's going to go down and say, what do you want to do in that industry? Do you want to generate a lead? Do you want to sell something? Do you want to? And then it's basically going to populate and create funnels automatically for them. And so we're wow. super excited about that. And then in addition to that, we're adding follow-up funnels so they can then have all the email sequences to help generate. We're trying to make it just dummy simple. Yeah. Very interesting. Now, will that? This is funny because we're we're talking about a similar thing with with. And I, I listen to the Mother Funnel uh, Russell's Mother Funnel podcast, and uh, and we're doing a similar thing with our training, right? Like we focus on e-commerce. We traditionally focused on more affiliate stuff, where we are teaching people to run other people's offers, essentially. Uh, and now we've switched uh, to go really focused on e-commerce to to uh, to, to kind of nail that down. But we think eventually we'd like to have a funnel where people come in and we're saying, "Would you like to build a business where you own the product, or would you like to run traffic?" So can you actually build that? Will you be able to build something like that on ClickFunnels, or will that just be a web development uh, outside of ClickFunnels? No, you'll be able to do that on, on ClickFunnels for sure. That's that's all I needed. Yeah, to absolutely that's... for sure. Yeah, no, I mean we're list segmentation for us is one of the most important pieces. Uh, we did it most recently on our Funnel Builder Secrets uh, podcast or a webinar we did with Russell a couple of weeks ago and segmented them into those lists and then had the, had our messenger list segmented by those industries as well. So we can now communicate through Facebook and we can communicate through email based on the industry that they're in and where they're trying to go. So, and I know you guys, another thing that we're working on right now is our value chain, our value ladder, uh, and, and trying to figure that out exactly. I know you guys just added a new node on the sort of, on the top end of yours, <laughs> right? A new step. We did. Well, What's that called and how's that going? It's our two comma club X coaching program. So the whole idea is to get people from zero to a million dollars, which is two commas, and then from a million dollars or seven figures to eight figures, 10 million. And so it's basically to get you from startup to $10 million in 
within the next two to three years is kind of what we look at. And so we originally rolled it out at our Funnel Hacking Live event where we plan on selling about 250 of them. We end up selling over 600 and uh, more than, it's a, again, podcast for a different time. But um, it was fascinating for us because of because of how, how many people went into it. Our obligation to ourselves to make sure they have success. I mean, it was crazy. My son signed up for it. Uh, my partner, our, our CTO's wife signed up for it. Uh, four or five of the people we know personally signed up. And it's like, we have to deliver on this thing. They have to have success. And so for us, it's, it's literally become our flagship coaching program. Very interesting. So you, so you start with the book. That's, that's usually the beginning of your funnels, right? You start with, start with the book funnel and then it goes up through like, what's, what's your next step on that? Is it, does it go right through a click funnel subscription basically? That, um, there's a couple, depending which book they go through, there's, uh, within that funnel, there's the audio books. There's a couple of other, uh, opportunities for them to purchase other products, information products. Mm -hmm. It always ends with the uh, free trial. And then from there, we actually are going into a thank you webinar and the thank you webinar is where they then are introduced to funnel builder secrets. Very interesting. So, um, yeah, th th this is directly applicable to what we're building right now. It, and I, I, I really, when I was, uh, I, I think it was someone just told me a major takeaway they got from Funnel Hacking Live, uh, Russell's talk was when he really, and you alluded to this earlier when you said, uh, you, you know, if you're working on more than one funnel and that funnel hasn't produced, you know, a million dollars yet, you should you should just focus on the one until you get seven figures from from the one funnel. And I took that directly to heart, and we really sort of changed. Uh, the way, you know, we, we did our, our, in 2017, like I said, we produced 14 courses. We had three live events. We had um, a mastermind. We did all these things, but they're kind of disjointed and they weren't structured in a, in a very sort of like value ladder-ish way. So we've kind of gone back to the drawing board. We've, we've stopped producing quite as much, but we're focusing on one larger funnel. So, I, and I, I'm, I, I'll let you know how it goes, uh, but I'm really excited for it. And I think it's a really smart approach to really double in, you know, dial in on that one big idea rather than lots of little ones that are partially supported. We ended up uh, this last year closing down two multi-million dollar funnels because they weren't in alignment. So one was our certification program, which we had done, I think, almost three million the year before. And we closed that down. And then we also closed down our funnel university product and shut that down as well. So it's uh, it's been uh, I we know exactly the pain you're going through because you're like, I'm making money. Why should I close I know. it? It's like yeah. because it's taken away focus. And that's the main reason for us. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Well, I want to thank you so much for coming on the podcast today. If anyone, if people want to get in touch with you, obviously, uh, you know, they can reach out to ClickFunnels. Uh, I don't know if you're active. I know you're on Facebook. Are you, are you a tweeter? What, how, how could people, if they have further questions, reach out to you? Facebook or Instagram are the two easiest ways to, to reach me for sure. Nice. Well, thanks very much. Enjoy the beautiful day in Boise there. Say hi to Russell for me. I'm I gonna, will for sure. I'm going to get him on this podcast at some point this year. <laughs> that's that's a goal. Uh, but this this has been absolutely amazing. I want to, yeah, thanks again. And uh, hopefully we'll see you at one of our events in the future. I look forward to it. Thanks again. Okay, bye-bye. See ya.